Any online test claiming to diagnose retinal tetrachromacy is fundamentally misleading. No digital test viewed on a conventional screen can accurately determine retinal tetrachromatic vision because every element in the current digital pipeline, display, camera and color data is engineered for trichromatic processing. To truly test for tetrachromacy, the entire system must change. First, the display device would need to be redesigned with four independent subpixels instead of the usual three thereby enabling it to emit four distinct color channels. Second, the cameras and digital color standards would have to capture and process the additional fourth dimension of color, something that current technology isn't built to do since it is confined to three dimensions of color. In essence, the fake online tetrachromacy tests you encounter simply confirm what every conventional device already does. They demonstrate trichromatic vision. A standard digital image is a three-dimensional structure color-wise. Each axis represents a digital primary color – red, green and blue. Tetrachromacy adds a fourth axis, orthogonally expanding this 3D structure into a fourth color dimension. This four-dimensionality of tetrachromacy transforms the very way hues and colors are distinguished, revealing a dimension of color that a three-dimensional system simply cannot capture nor display. A fake online test for retinal tetrachromacy like the one that you see here just reiterates the inherent limitation of RGB displays. It's a system designed to showcase a one-dimensional slice of the hue spectrum that cannot reveal the full, vibrant two-dimensional plane of hues accessible to a functional tetrachromat. Without re-engineering the entire digital framework, any claim to diagnose retinal tetrachromacy online remains, at best, a delusion of enhanced color vision, misleading unwary people into the false belief that their color vision is somehow special, when it's really just normal. Now, that we understand that no online test can diagnose retinal tetrachromacy, I'm going to present to you the only exception to this rule. That's because we can simulate tetrachromatic vision on standard screens, which at first seems to contradict what I've just explained. But it doesn't. Let me explain. Understanding the difference between trichromacy and tetrachromacy on paper is one thing. Seeing it for yourself is quite another. While retinal tetrachromacy arises from innate biological variations in color perception, we can mimic this enhanced vision by using our current digital and biological tools in an alienated way. By deliberately breaking the chromatic redundancy of binocular color vision, assigning distinct color channels to each eye, we can generate novel color experiences that normal trichromats would never encounter naturally. This binocularly disruptive approach to color vision produces what are known as impossible color combinations. In this context, these combinations are not just theoretical colors. They represent a genuine expansion of the perceptual palette beyond the traditional three-dimensional color space. One compelling example is the simulation of true red non-retinal tetrachromacy. Here, one eye perceives an independent red channel a monochromatic red gradient generated through a virtual subpixel. When combined with the trichromatic color information received by the second eye, we can functionally simulate tetrachromatic color experiences, effectively mimicking a fourth dimension of color perception without the need of any risky genetic and biological alterations. The science behind this simulation is simple. Essentially, each eye functions as an independent organ. It is only during the brain's post-processing that the separate images from each eye are merged into a single coherent perspective. This is why, when the red monochromatic eye is closed, you immediately revert to standard trichromatic vision. The additional color dimension is lost without the binocular interplay you might not be able to stably see, correctly interpret or name these new true red tetrachromatic colors as a beginner, but they are real and distinct tetrachromatic colors that you can learn to see through adequate training and technology. I encourage you to watch the series of videos I've produced on true red tetrachromacy. These videos lay a solid foundation for understanding how we can artificially extend our color perception and will provide the necessary context for the true red tetrachromatic colors that I'm using to visualize non-retinal tetrachromacy from now on. 
We now know that designing a valid test for retinal tetrachromacy on a conventional screen is simply not feasible. Conventional displays are built for trichromatic vision and replicating the unique properties of retinal tetrachromacy would require a specialized tetrachromatic screen. One that offers a fourth color channel and is adapted to the individual genetic color receptor variation of the tetrachromat. In contrast, true red tetrachromacy, which is a non-retinal tetrachromacy, can be simulated on a standard screen by using stereo viewing techniques, because the fourth primary color is a second kind of red. This is an incredible luxury that retinal tetrachromacy doesn't have. It makes this non-retinal tetrachromacy the only form of tetrachromacy that can be simulated on a normal screen. In order for you to understand the significance of what I've just said, I'm going to put it into perspective. This here is all the hues a normal trichromat can distinguish. It's the normal trichromatic circular hue spectrum that we're all familiar with. Hue in tetrachromacy, however, is inherently two-dimensional. This means that the true red tetrachromatic hue plane looks like this. It's the isolated and unfolded surface of a 4D tetrachromatic hypersphere, but many of you might not be able to distinguish all the true red tetrachromatic hues on this plane as unique and new colors yet because you need to train your eyes and brain to correctly see and interpret them, I can assure you that each color dot on this hue plane has a unique true red tetrachromatic hue especially to my trained eyes and brain. Furthermore, because these true red tetrachromatic hues naturally lie on a spherical surface, we can remap them onto a three-dimensional sphere to eliminate any redundancies. On this sphere, every single point represents a distinct true red tetrachromatic hue, culminating in an extraordinary spherical plane of hues that's conceptually foreign to trichromacy. In effect, a tetrachromat is capable of distinguishing not just a rainbow of hues, but a rainbow of rainbow hues. Each segment of the conventional trichromatic hue spectrum is further subdivided into multiple distinguishable tetrachromatic hues, which extend into a hue dimension that's private to tetrachromacy. Ironically, even a rainbow, an inherently one-dimensional color phenomenon, can only capture one single slice of this expansive two-dimensional tetrachromatic hue plane. Armed with this deeper understanding, we can now design precise tests to probe true red tetrachromacy. One obvious approach is to disrupt the natural order of true red tetrachromatic hues on a two-dimensional plane. Jumbled color dots that must be reassembled into their correct spatial and chromatic positions. This is not only a challenging puzzle, but it's also a sophisticated diagnostic challenge engineered to expose the fundamental differences between tetrachromatic and trichromatic color perception. Alongside this test, the adjacent trichromatic view displays the same true red tetrachromatic hues as perceived by a normal trichromat. Though the underlying color sequences remain somewhat understandable here, the human eye, when relying solely on trichromatic processing, collapses the distinct true red tetrachromatic hues into trichromatic colors, thereby only showing a distorted trichromatic color plane with many color duplicates. For example, the line of red dots, that all look like having a unique hue to a true red tetrachromat, looks like the same singular red hue to normal trichromats. And as another example, to normal trichromats, red cyan just looks like white, red green just like yellow and red blue just like magenta. Similar to how no dichromat can pass a colorblind test for trichromacy, no unaided trichromat can pass this colorblind test for true red tetrachromat. A normal trichromat will confuse many of these true red tetrachromatic hues and might not even be able to reasonably arrange them in the first place. This test serves as a colorblind challenge for trichromats, comparable to how dichromats struggle with tests designed for trichromatic vision. Without the capacity to perceive the extended dimension of true red tetrachromatic hues, an unaided trichromat is unlikely to arrange the colors correctly, highlighting the diagnostic power of this approach. And this hue ordering test is not limited to stereo viewing techniques on digital screens. An analog version in combination with the true red tetrachromacy classes that allow for true red tetrachromacy in real life would be even more functional and powerful. 
We can further refine this test by extending it into three dimensions, by mapping the two-dimensional plane of true red tetrachromatic hues onto the surface of a sphere. We provide a more intuitive model of how these hues interrelate. On this spherical surface, every point represents a distinct true red tetrachromatic hue. And when these hues are randomly scrambled, the challenge remains. Reassemble them in the correct two-dimensional order. Although this is no simple task at first, with practice in recognizing and interpreting these impossible color combinations, the process begins to feel as natural as arranging trichromatic colors in a familiar circular spectrum. We can also enhance the notorious Ishihara test for color blindness and customize it for true red tetrachromatic colors. While you might neither be able to correctly identify nor name each true red tetrachromatic hue on these hue planes yet, you will certainly see the very differences these new colors allow you to make. Let's take an Ishihara plate with trichromatic color dots. This plate doesn't show any numbers yet. While this plate doesn't portray all trichromatic colors, because of the relatively small amount of color dots, we can generally agree that at least each trichromatic hue is being represented. However, in true red tetrachromacy we can see a spectrum of distinct tetrachromatic hues for each trichromatic hue, allowing us to make hue distinctions into an additional dimension of hue on this very plate. To make this more comprehensible, we just have to binocularly overlay a numbered red monochromatic plate with the normal trichromatic plate. Now, although you probably still won't be able to identify the true red tetrachromatic colors of these dots as a beginner, you can suddenly see the numbers and characters. This plate here perfectly demonstrates how insane tetrachromatic vision really is and what it means to see into a fourth dimension of color, especially when you are comparing it to the adjacent normalized trichromatic view where practically no characters are distinguishable. To illustrate the insanity of functional tetrachromacy even more, we can use true red tetrachromatic hues that look indistinguishable to normal trichromats. For example, a plate with a pure yellow background and a red-green number looks uniformly yellow to a normal trichromat. But a true red tetrachromat can distinguish these two unique hues similarly well to how easily normal trichromats distinguish yellow and blue. Furthermore, a red cyan hue just looks white to a normal trichromat, but for true red tetrachromats it's a distinct hue that's very different from white. Here too, as a true red tetrachromat, you can easily see the number, while a normal trichromat would have no clue that there's even a visible number. Moreover, a red-blue hue just looks like a magenta color to normal trichromats, but is also distinguishable as a unique hue by true red tetrachromats. In this plate too, you can see a distinctly colored number, while a normal trichromat would be puzzled by your ability to tell these two identical magentas apart. There are many more examples and hues that are distinguishable by true red tetrachromats, but appear to be identical to normal trichromats. These visualizations and tests demonstrate the monstrosity that tetrachromacy really is. To summarize, diagnosing retinal tetrachromacy on a conventional screen is fundamentally impossible due to the inherent trichromatic design of these devices. However, by using stereo viewing techniques, we can simulate true red tetrachromatic hues on any RGB screen, offering a window into four-dimensional color perception. Any functional tetrachromacy features a 2D plane of hues, a 3D hue saturation subspace and a 4D color hyperspace. Because true red tetrachromacy is generated non-retinally, we have the exclusive luxury to simulate it on RGB screens. This allows us to more easily visualize, learn and understand true red tetrachromatic colors, as well as design functional digital versions of tetrachromatic hue ordering and Ishihara colorblind tests that would be impossible to conduct for retinal tetrachromacy chromacies on standard screens. I think I've sufficiently blown your mind by now, so I'll leave it at that for today. If you want to try out the true red tetrachromacy hue ordering and Ishihara play tests for yourself and play around with them, you can visit my website Color in Color that's linked in the description of every video. I am Wu Kwai, 
and I will show you how to reshape and enhance your sensory experiences because it is nothing but our senses that connect us to this world. Have fun watching and learning all these impossible colors. Thanks for watching.